Hey there, welcome to the video guys. My name is Pushpinder Gill. So today uh, we're going to learn the the argon plane uh, and polar representation of complex numbers. Right. So this is what we're going to go. I'm, I'm going a bit freestyle here and I'm just writing it out. So the argon plane and polar representation of a complex number. Uh, that is what we're going to learn today. Now suppose you watched a complex number video in which we discussed uh, you know about what is a complex number, how can we add it, how it how can we multiply it, how can we divide it. Well all those all those things have been learned. I'm pre-assuming that. Uh, now in this uh, video over here, we are going to uh, learn about the argon plane and polar representation. Now uh, let's suppose uh, you know we have an ordered pair, you know, we have a number, let's suppose we have an ordered pair x comma y. Now we have an argon plane which kind of represents a, a complex number, you know, it, it represents a complex number. Let's suppose this is our plane and this is the x axis and this is the y axis. And you know, x comma y, it's it's kind of any point on this argon plane. You know, this is also negative y axis and negative x axis. Now uh, let's suppose if I have a complex number, let's suppose 2 plus 4i. Let's suppose this is the complex number 2 plus 4. Then I can represent this as 2 comma 4 on my argon plane. So this is what it is where, where the x-axis is the real axis. That's called the real axis. And uh, the y-axis is called the imaginary axis. You know, it, it con constitutes of the imaginary number. Right. So let's suppose if I have, you know, 2 comma 0 i. You know, that would be represented as... 2 comma 0 here you know so this is how I represent so let's suppose if I if I want to represent a negative 3 comma 2 in terms of a complex number so that is gonna that complex number is going to be equal to negative 3 plus 2i right because the x coordinate is known as the the x coordinate is known as the real real a uh, real part of it and the y coordinate is known as the imaginary part of it now this is uh, nothing which is called as uh, you know the, the plane having the complex number it's it's called the complex plane so this plane is known as the complex plane or it's also known as the argon plane right now there are few specific uh, properties uh, that you can actually understand about the argon plane let's understand these properties right so there are few properties that would we will be interested in let's understand those so the first property is that in an argon plane, uh, let's suppose this is actually the plane here. Uh, so in an argon plane, this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. Every point on the x-axis uh, would be a complex number uh, that would represent a plus 0 times i because, you know, the, the imaginary part is 0 here. And every point on the y-axis is going to represent the complex number, uh, you know, b, sorry, 0 plus bi. Right. So that because, you know, the, the the real part on this complex number is zero. So that is the first property of, you know, of, of this argon plane. And the second thing that I want to discuss about, it's actually the modulus of this argon plane of a complex number. Right. So that's what I discuss about. So let's suppose we have this plane wherein we have the y axis and we have the x axis. And let's suppose there is a point somewhere. Let's suppose point P and the coordinates of point P is x comma y. And the complex number representing x comma y is going to be x plus i y, right? So this would be the coordinates of the complex number representing x comma y, and this is the origin, which is definitely zero comma zero. And if you try to find the distance from here all the way till here, right? We try to find the distance uh, from here all the way till here, and uh, the distance from here all the way till here. It's going to be the, the y axis, which is going to be y. And the distance from here all the way till here, it's going to be x, which means uh, the distance from here to here. So we're going to call, we're going to represent that distance uh, by the number r. Uh, you know, this, we're going to represent this by r. So from here, we can say r square is equal to x square plus y square, which means we can say r is equal to under root of x square plus y square. Right. So this R uh, represents uh, the the under root of x square plus y square, which is actually the modulus of the complex number, which is equal to modulus of z, which means I can say that that modulus of x plus iy is actually equal to R. 
right so this is how we represent the modulus of a complex number right so suppose you're understanding the simple property here now uh, another thing that we're going to discuss is is how do we represent uh, the the conjugate how do we represent the conjugate of a complex number right so if you watch the previous video you would have understood that let's suppose we have a, a complex number x plus i y the conjugate of that complex number uh, we're going to represent it as let's put z dash is going to be x minus i y so how do we represent it on an R grid plane so you can clearly see if this is x comma y which uh, represents uh, this z here and this if let's suppose this q this is going to represent x comma negative y so this is the conjugate of this expression here however uh, even if you see that this the, the distance from origin from this point to this point is going to be r and the distance from this point to this point is going to be r so the conjugate has the same modulus or you can say the same distance as uh, it's done by the real point real point right so you know that is a little property that you can use so let's go ahead and you know find out what how do we represent what's the polar representation of a complex number right so how do we represent a complex number in, in a polar form right so let's again you know let's just uh, set up our question here so let's suppose this is a complex number which is denoted by x and y and z is equal to x plus i times y from here if we kind of join this line here and we kind of join this line here so this would be the y value this would be the x value and this would actually be equal to r and we know that r is equal to under root of x square plus y square which is actually the modulus of the complex here right so we actually have to represent uh, the the polar form in terms i'm going to introduce a new variable here that is this theta so we have to actually find out we have to actually represent this uh, this complex number in terms of theta so i'm just going to use a little uh, trigonometry here uh, as you know that sine theta it's nothing but that is perpendicular over hypotenuse and cos theta it's base over hypotenuse so what is sine theta here so the perpendicular is y and the hypotenuse is r and what is cos theta here uh, the perpendicular it's the base is actually x and the hypotenuse is r so using these two expressions uh, what i can do is i can actually find out the value of r in terms of theta so from here i can say that that uh, the value of y is actually equal to r sin theta and the value of x is equal to r cos theta so using these two expressions here i can actually break my complex number into a few parts here you know i can break the complex number uh, so we know that z is equal to x plus i times y uh, and x is nothing but r cos theta so z is equal to r cos theta uh, plus i times y is equal to r sin theta so from here we can take z is equal to r so we're going to take this r out which is cos theta plus i sin theta so this is the polar representation of this complex number right here right and again from here uh, we know that r is the modulus of z something that we already know and theta is actually called the principle of it's called the principle of the argument it's the principal argument of of the complex number right it's also also represented as the argument of z that is arg of z that is again a different way of representing it now there are few uh, restrictions or let's say a few different ways you can actually represent this theta just going to show you that here so the value of theta can actually lie if, if you kind of take the value of theta to be between 2 pi and 0 so if you kind of take this between 360 degrees and uh, and 0 so then you can say that if the value of p is in the first quadrant then this is how you will measure theta if the value of p it's in the second quadrant then this is how you measure theta the value of p is in the third quadrant then again this is how you measure theta and if the value of p is in the fourth quadrant then again this is how you measure theta 
So that means no matter what, you're always going to go anti-clockwise. However, if I say that you measure the value of theta in terms of uh, positive, you know, in between positive pi and negative pi. So if you if you measure theta between positive pi and negative pi, or between so if you take it to be between positive pi and negative pi, then you know that the value of theta cannot exceed pi. So if the val if p is an actually in the first quadrant, then you know what? It won't exceed pi. This is how you're going to take it. If p is in the second quadrant, again, this won't exceed pi. This is how you're going to take it. If p is actually in the third quadrant, then you know that going like this would actually create a lot of problem. Uh, you know, so that means, you know, it's, it's, catch, it's actually going to go more than pi here, which is why you're going to take this as the value of pi, right? And again, uh, if it's in the fourth quadrant, again, you will be taking this as the value of theta, right? not the pi, the value of theta, right? So uh, this is how it is. Uh, you know, that means if P is actually in the first quadrant and in the second quadrant, then in this case, then you go anti-clockwise and... Uh, if the if p is actually in the third quadrant or the fourth quadrant then you go clockwise right so that is what it is uh, about the polar representation let's actually take an example so that you know you can understand it in a better way let's suppose if i say we want to represent this complex number here that is uh, 1 plus i root 3 Let's suppose we want to represent this in a polar form, right? So if we kind of put this uh, on, on, on the graph here, we know that this is 1 comma root 3 because this is 1 and this is root 3. And if you kind of join this up, this is nothing but which is the y, y part root 3. This is the x part. And the value of r is going to be equal to root of x square plus y square, which is equal to root of 1 plus 3, uh, which is equal to 2. So this is actually equal to 2. Now, we have to represent a complex number. Z is equal to x plus uh, i comma y, which is this number here, in terms of r into, uh, in terms of the complex number, which is r into cos theta uh, plus i sine theta. That means we need the value of this theta. So that is actually we can get very easily because we know that sine theta is, perpendicular over hypotenuse which is root 3 by 2 using this expression we know that theta is actually equal to 60 degrees or theta it's equal to pi by 3 so we get, we get the value of theta that means we can represent z to be equal to r uh, cos theta plus i sin theta something that I've already written, r cos theta, uh, cos theta into i sin theta. So z is equal to, the value of r is equal to 2. Cos theta, it's, uh, the value of theta is pi by 3, so it's cos pi by 3, plus i sin pi by 3. So we have the value of sin pi by 3. So that is the polar representation of this complex number right here. Right. So I suppose you're understanding this point here, guys. Uh, this would be the, about the video where we talked about the polar representation of a complex number. We're going to be coming with more future videos on this. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to explore more about us on this website. And uh, this would be the Facebook page. We can give us your valuable like. And uh, you can give us your feedback on this email address. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.